Welcome to this YouTube channel. We are Bible Way Temple International, an apostolic church situated in the Mova Lavantil community, located in the beautiful Twin Island Republic state of Trinidad and Tobago. Our mandate is to touch and transform lives by being good stewards, sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And today, it is a pleasure to share this message with you. We invite you to praise and worship with us as we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord over our lives. It's a great pleasure to be back here with my dear friend, Dr. Curtis Paul, and the rest of your wonderful brethren at Bible Way Temple International. I believe that there is something in the trajectory of the atmosphere that wants to bring great transformation. You know, there's a lot of stuff have been spoken about this area about territorial spirits being assigned to this community, etc., etc. But I, I tend to disagree with it. I believe that there is greatness that is embedded and entrenched and ingrained in this part of our country. And there are young men and women that God is going to raise them up and they would out preach, out sing, out dance, out anointing, just about every human expectation or limitation that is placed before them. Are you blessed that you're sitting on greatness? Come on, somebody say amen. Some great things are going to emerge, okay? Well, this morning I got up and I said it this morning, you know, Pastor, I ministered this morning at the church of Dr. Perali and, and, and David Manning and I are very good friends. We are both from the South, you know? South people always run with South people. David he said, I'm going to be at your place at 7.30. Pick you up. You're going to run today. He was there at 7.31. And his father did a great job on him. Come on. Come on. He, he, he knows punctuality. I just want to share with you this morning. Could I sing you a song? Is it okay? Well, I, you got such lovely singers in the church, man. I, 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 I would make a fool of myself. Should I, man? Okay, let's go, man. That's okay. I do sing a bit. You got to give me some volume, okay? Give me some volume, bro. Where is the volume, man? That's all you got? Come on. I have journeyed Through the long dark night Out on the open sea I faith alone Inside watching me Deus 
the sails are torn softly aren't you blessed that God has got to do a work in you before he could do a work through you he has got to do a work in us and how are you blessed that God takes time out of the affairs of this great big universe to spend time with me and with you Pastor Curtis and with you David and with you Mama and with you he leaves the entire universe and he comes to spend time with you and me. And he wipes the tears away from your eyes and my eyes. You see, there is something that is happening in the church, my dear friends. For those that are in the light of God's word, they would receive the greatest divine illumination the world has ever seen. But for those that are in darkness, would slip into the blackest of all darkness. And I love Dr. Curtis Paul. He's my good friend. And he comes out whenever I'm in Trinidad. And sometimes he finds them churches, David, way out in the bushes. I don't know. He finds it. Maybe he's got GPS or something. Man. And he's always there. He's my good friend, man. I'll tell you what a friend is. Not some guy who comes to your house for Christmas and eats your food cake and drinks your beer drugs. That's not your friend. 
who comes to your birthday party and eats your ice cream and chew your bit of a teeth. A friend is someone who is born for adversity and would stick closer than a brother. When you are naked, your friend is going to clothe you. When you are hungry, a friend is going to feed you. When you feel as though the pressures of life is overcoming you, your friend is going to cover you with his love, his prayers, and his intercession. You see, there is something that's happening in the church right now. Dr. Curtis, I don't have a message. I depend upon the Holy Spirit to lead me to bring a word that is relevant to the needs of the people. Jesus had something unique that took place in his life. Am I, come, am I falling behind you? Okay, sorry about that. Bro. He had the unique ability of bringing a word in season. Come on. Mama, you've got to be connected to the Spirit of God. Sometimes you've got to put aside your agenda and surrender. Says, yes. Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes. And that is when you have come to a place of maturity. Behold, I send my messenger to the temple. Pastor, the messenger that he's sending is not Benny Hinn, nor is it T.D. Jakes, nor is my beautiful friend C.C. Wynan. That's not the messenger he's sending. He is sending something called the prophetic anointing. And that anointing comes to you and me. Not in an attitude of condemnation or destructiveness. But it comes to you and said, hey brother. It knocks on your heart. Hey daughter, I want to give you more. I want to give you a little bit of my, my grace and my anointing and my power and my abilities and my talents. But there are some things in your life. That we got to work together to get it out. Maybe you are too easily discouraged. Maybe you are caught up with the trauma of previous experiences. Could I say this? Maybe you adjust your expectations to your limitations and would pamper your dysfunctionalities. Maybe you are hiding behind a pet weakness or a pet sin. That spirit comes, Dave, and says, hey, let's work together. Because I cannot give you what I want to give you. You see, this is something we do. And ladies would know this. You have a kitchen sink that's plugged. And we keep adding clean water to dirty water and get rid of the plug. No, my dear friends, we got to snake out the drain. Come on. Or remove the plug and let everything come out of it. This is what God is saying. I can't give you more with what I want to give you based on what you got inside of you. How many of you see the love of God in what I'm saying? And then he says in the book of Malachi 4, 5. I'm sending this messenger, Elijah. And when he comes, he is going to turn the hearts of the fathers. Send me a turnaround anointing. Come on. He's going to change direction. Maybe that way that you're running is a good way, but it ain't the way. You see, he says, I'm going to change your hearts. And there could be no life change without a heart change. Our lives ain't going to change unless our heart changes, Pastor. When your heart has changed, there is going to be a struggle for you and me to do the things that was not pleasing to God. 
Hear what I'm saying to you, friends. God spends time with us. He wants to change us. Maybe we are evolving. We are stepping out of an area of conflict. And he sends his spirit to quicken us. Because if you look at the world that we are living in, there is an embellishment of anarchy and criminality. There is a gender customizing spirit. A six-year-old child, I ministered this morning at the university in uh, Kurab, Sam is his name, Sam is in my college, can't remember. And, you know, here in the world today, a six-year-old child could tell its parents, I want to change my sex. A boy, but I want to be a girl. And the teacher that teaches him in school, he dare not say otherwise. He'd be charged. So the parent can't train up their kids no more. They are being entertained in school by drag queens. But mama, you could train your dog or your cat, but you dare not train your child. I have a heart for young people, friends. Come on. You can't train your kids. And today, the Bible says, pay not to run and spoil the child. If you beat your child, you hit them a slap. You go, they go tell the teacher in school. Amen. Police are coming for you. Okay? We are living in a humanistic world. So, 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 so becoming a parent in this dimension, it is more difficult than any other age in which we live. So that breeds a sense of, hear what I'm saying to you, independence amongst the thinking. It's known as generation X, Y, Z. This is known as a missing generation. But I don't want to say that the young people of today are missing everything, brother. Because I believe that the opportunity for excellence is greater because the Holy Spirit is moving mightily in the church as never before. Here is a young man. It's in the book of Luke, the 15th chapter. A certain man had two kids. Luke 15. A certain man had two kids. And let me change up the story a bit, Pastor, because you always say, I, do, I say something new. That certain man is God himself. And the two kids that he got, one was the New Testament and the Old Testament. The older son was the Old Testament believer. The younger son was the New Testament dudes like you and me. Now, there is something about the Levitical law that we must know. If you had two sons, the elder son was entitled to two-thirds of your estate. The younger son won too. So the church of today, which is the younger son, the New Testament church, came to him and says, give me what I want. Give me what is mine. I'm out of here. You know the church of today is very self-willed. Well, can I, can I tell you? I, you know, brother, there are pastors that I know it's their way or the highway. They're brutal. Come on. Autocratic. Legalistic. Domineering. Manipulative. And even intimidating. We want pastors that are led by the Holy Spirit. Come on, lift your hands to God. We, we want some pastors that are led by the Spirit. And you might hear me on the radio getting on bad. Do, do some of you hear me on the radio? When I go wild on the radio? I like to go wild, man. And tell them fellas all kind of things. Because I believe a lot of the church is running a race and crossing the wrong finish line. Pastor, we are running a race but crossing the wrong finish line. We have got a lot of programs but no power. A lot of activity but no productivity. Yes, we left, we left the wilderness, but we are stuck in Egypt. Yeah. 
So this young son came and he says, Father, give me what's mine. I'm all in here. I am mature, I'm big, I'm respectable, I'm responsible. You did a good job with me. Now give me what is mine, I'm gone. And in his state of what I would say, immaturity and not understanding the ugliness of the enticement and the attractions and the brainwashing that you and I could receive from a secular world took what was his and spent it with the swines. He had gone into a world where there was no Jesus. And it was only a matter of time. Evil communications would corrupt. If you want, you, you want to be blessed, look at what a successful man does and do it. Evil communications would corrupt. You run with the people that are in gangs and selling drugs and robbing houses and stealing cars. It's the only matter of time you're going to be involved in some way or the other. What is the church of today involved in? Mama, we are involved in theatrics. We have got all them false prophets. Are prophesying to people conveniently. Many times it's not the Holy Spirit. We preach a message of prosperity and prophecy. And the word that brings us to an understanding of living right, it's somehow caught up in the shuffle of an abundance of messages. He took what was his without his father's influence and covering. Come on, somebody say amen. How much you need the covering. Come on, somebody say amen. If you are out there by yourself without a church covering you, an anointed church covering you, it's only a matter of time that the falls of the air, which is the demon spirits, would scoop down and grab you. You see, backsliding is not a blowout. You don't get up in the morning and backslide from yesterday. It's like a little leak in a bicycle tire. It's a gradual thing. You missed one Wednesday, you feel bad about it. You missed a Sunday, you feel less bad about it. The next thing you know, you're missing a month or a week. And you're walking around with your mouth open, catching flies, not realizing that you are in a backslidden state. You know holiness, brother? I'll tell you something. I don't want to keep the people too long, okay? You want to see how to live victoriously? We live in a stage, a day that we call the Laodicean day. Revelation 3.18. This is the church that says, I have need for nothing. I've got money. I've got prestige. I've got power. This is the church today that says, I don't need anything. I'm in the stock market. I'm into Bitcoin. I'm in the Forex. And God looks at the church and he says, listen to what you are saying, Mr. Church. I'm not saying that as far as I'm saying, Pastor Revelation 3.18. You are wretched, naked, miserable, blind, and you don't know it. This is the church of the day, son. Let me ask you a question. If I stand up before you and I'm naked, and I don't know I'm naked, what is my mental condition? Right? If I'm blind, and I don't know I'm blind, I am mad. It's not me saying that God is using a parabolic language about the last church age before the coming of Christ. See, I encourage you to go buy some gold. What is gold? The character of Christ. And buy some eyesight. 
I tell you, David was a shepherd. And during the day, the temperature, you know, in Israel is, is about 120 degrees. And at night, it goes down to zero, minus five. And them sheep would gather a cold in their eyes. So they'd get up in mornings and their eyes would be filled with, with inflammation. Thing. So what David used to do, when they got that condition where they couldn't see properly, he would make a, a poultice of some herbs with cinnamon and whatever, and he would burn the eyes of the sheep. So when he took it off, the vision of the sheep would improve. How much we need to see things with the vision of the Holy Spirit. How much we need to see things through the Word of God. He says, get some eye salve. And he's telling the, the church of today. You know, I love to come by Pastor Curtis Paul. You know why? I know he's a man of truth. And he's a straight shooter, man. Pastor Curtis Paul, Dr. Curtis Paul, I'm happy to be your friend, bro. I don't know how long I could keep coming to Trinidad. You know, man, in two, you know, in six weeks from now, you know how old I would be? Make a guess. Nobody don't say the wrong age because I'm older than I am because I get this. <laughs> in six weeks from now, I'm 70. Okay? I still got teeth and hair. You know, but when I came into Trinidad, you know, it's becoming more strenuous. I am a chairman of five universities, and I don't want to impress anyone, okay? I, I love to be low-key. Okay? My, t you know, my ability to fly, you know, you take six hours to get on a plane, six hours to fly, and then another three hours to offload. One trip takes you 15 hours. It's kind of difficult now. But I keep coming back. I love my people. People love me in the pews. Pastors want to kill me because of my statements. You know why that? If God be for you, who be against you? He got what he wanted and left. Outside of his father's covering, he was a open duck in a pool for the demonic world. Every spirit had access to him. He was outside of godly, anointed, priestly covering. You see, when you're under the right covering, there is a hovering of the Holy Spirit over you. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know you need the hovering of the Holy Spirit? You need the hovering of the Holy Spirit. When Peter walked the streets, the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem, and the Bible says that his shadow healed the sick. It was not his shadow. It was the hovering of the Holy Spirit over him. We need the hovering of the Spirit, don't we? Somebody say it. You need a Holy Ghost church, friends. You need a church where them ladies would sing and sing and sing and the Holy Spirit comes and they would dance on their beads of perspiration. Can I tell you something? Where everybody begins to speak in tongues and rejoice and you get a turn, a hold of the eternal realm. You need the hovering and the covering of the Holy Spirit. Have you asked yourself how Mary had that baby? You want some strong theology? Mary's 14 years old. She's a virgin. God says, and young men and young women that are listening here today, this message is for you because there's a, a greatness that awaits the young people of the world. I don't care. I live in Toronto, man. 
And, and 12, 13 year olds are holding up bus drivers and rubbing cars, man. They're stopping cars all over there. They're going into malls. They know how to break into computers and stealing cars like you wouldn't believe. The crimes today is being committed from ages 12 to 15. And do you know something? This blew you blow your mind. The age of kids being burnt out is between the age of 12 to 15. What has burnt them out? Them, 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 them laptops and them phones? Mary, you're going to have a baby. And it's not going to come to the normal sexual process. I want to show you the value of covering. He said, but Lord, I know not the man. He says, daughter, you would go to sleep one night. Come on, say to me, you'd go to sleep one night. Come on, lift your hands to God. You go to rest in Jesus one night. You'd be resting on the words that have been released upon your life. He released a word of birthing. And he says, when you go to bed, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow. Come on, somebody say amen. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. You're going to be sleeping. And he's gonna come. come on, somebody say amen. He's going to hover over you. And release his creative anointing into your womb. tell you when the Holy Spirit is allowed to hover over you and me. Come on. Great things could happen. So this boy left his father's home. No covering. No hovering. No protection. And he found himself living with the swines. Living in the hog pen of the world. No Jesus. I tell you, there is one institution that is extended towards man that could make him live right. It's Jesus Christ. Them Muslim fellas, they would say, they are, oh, are we ready to be martyred? They would strap bombs around their waist and go sit in a bus with children and let that bomb explode and kill everyone. The opinion they are martyred for Muhammad. What a cute deception and demonic possession. When he walked the streets, and the Bible says his shadow healed the sick. Hey, who shadow? Then I shine a light over me and walk with you a million times. My shadow means nothing. When you are overshadowed, come on, but somebody say amen by the Holy Spirit. When you become an agency of a reflection of divine glory, and you hear what I'm telling you, church, things are gonna happen. So this boy left his father's covering. It was the only amount of time that he had lost it all. He spent everything that he had. And I'll tell you what it means by that. Mama, he spent everything. His conscience stopped working. He could not feel God no more. He could not tell what is right or wrong no more. How many of a lot of people like that? They can't tell what is right or wrong no more. Their conscience no longer works. You know, I do. I had Juanita Bynum in Trinidad with me not too long ago. I remember the services when Ethan was here. We did three nights at, at Austin the Books Church. Sometimes I get wireless, Bonita does. <laughs> but, you know, it depends on whether God wants it. But, no divine influence. So, young fellas, wherever you are, young people, wherever you are. Make sure you find yourself in church where you are covered. Your 
your salvation is your individual responsibility, but the strength of your covering is important. lost everything he had. He can't feel God no more. He's become dead, lifeless and insensitive even to the ministrations of the Holy Spirit. Can't feel the Holy Spirit. And when you come to that place where you can't feel God, you might be preaching, you might be singing. There are seasons in my life that I don't feel God but I go out every night and preach. And people will get saved. People will get filled with the Holy Spirit, Mama, but I'm not feeling God. How many of you have been like that before? You're hearing the best sermons, the best music, the best worship, but you're not feeling it. And sometimes as a minister, you cannot declare it until you feel it. You cannot declare a message or a word until you become one with the scripture and one with the Bible and one with the text. Come on. I can't declare it until I could feel it. T.D. Jake says, I've got to become one with the word, one with the scripture, one with the story. He lost it. Couldn't feel it. He found himself in a hog bed. Now, if you know about hogs and Jews, it is the lowest abasement for a Jew to mess with pigs and swine. Okay, it is the lowest de degradation and humiliation. He found himself living in the society that was a far country. He said to me, a far country. So far removed from normalcy. Lost his mind. And the Bible says he would eat the husk. You got to know something, friends. He would not even eat the corn. He would eat the husk. Can I tell you something about husk? Husk has got no life in it. It is the seed that has the potential. He was eating the husk. to take a look at yourself. When things are not going right with you and me and you're not happy, you got to take a look at yourself. Don't put a mirror here, man. And say, hey, what do you mean? Let me tell you something. David Comedy, you, where you are right now, is that who I have called you to be? You've got to see yourself in a way that I see you. What is before you is greater than everything that is behind you. Come on, somebody say amen. You've got to begin to tell yourself these kind of things. Come on. And the Bible said that he came to himself. Even the servants are better than I am. I'm going back to my covering. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm going back to the place that I knew I was happy. I remember when I was there, there was an abundance. Come on, understand me. I've lost my joy. I've lost my happiness. I've lost my self-respect, my self-esteem. I've lost my ambition. I don't feel good about myself. Come on, I've got to go back to the Father's house where I know I'm going to be safe and fed and protected. That is where I belong. I am not the dude in the mirror. He looked at himself. He came to himself. There's got to be an awakening in friends Danny 8.1 FM oh Dr. Comedy could you speak a bit on the revival and the awakening of our country I say yes I would 
But there ain't going to be no revival and no awakening until you come to yourself. You got to come. You got to come. You got to come to that awakening, mama. You got to know where you are is not where you should be. You know, there's no food in my refrigerator. My checks is bouncing. I don't have employment. I am being attacked and pulverized by just about by everyone. Come on. I don't understand, but I'm going through so much. Could I tell you something? You've got to go through some things to become someone for God. But you've got to understand, you've got to come to yourself. table has been set before you. Thou preparest the table before me. And it is not only ham and chicken and fish and beef. There is forgiveness on that table. There is mercy on that table. There is restoration on that table. There is blessedness on that table. There is divine provision on that table. There is protection and provision on that table. Come on. You've got to get to the table. Come on. You've got to get back to the Father's house on that table. has got everything that I want. Can I tell you something? You've got to leave behind. Get out of the hog pen. Know that your Father Come on, lift your hands to God. Say, I'm getting out of the hog pen. I'm getting out of poverty. My checks has got to be good. My bank account is going to be filled. Come on, I'm getting out of here. My spouse is going to get saved. My children is going to honor me. The people at my place of work would realize that I'm a Christian. Come on, I'm getting out of here. How many of you want to get out of here? I look at my medical report. I am leaving it behind. God is my healer. Healing is the children's bread. The leaves of the tree of life is for the healing of all nations. I'm getting out of here. resolution you make a resolution I'm getting out of here I don't belong here my father owns a cattle and a thousand hills I don't belong come on understand me sometimes you've got to encourage yourselves the Bible says you've got to encourage yourself hey, what I'm telling you my friends don't feel sorry for yourself although we are human beings and we all do it from time to time we have them pity parties, my dear friends. Look at what she is doing. Me. Look at what my spouse is doing. Look at what life has done to me. Come on. Sometimes you've got to quit feeling sorry for yourself and say that I am getting out of here. There is more in my father's house and table that I can handle. the New Testament church today if we get out of the hog pen I'm sorry to say it, there's a lot of great churches but the, you know if you really look at the church today a church that is blind and wretched and miserable and, big, and don't know it they don't know the Bible you're wretched, you're naked, you're miserable you don't know it, you're mad you're mad, you're crazy not me saying that mama it's the word of God. The boy gets up. Bye. Hog pen. I don't belong here. You got to know to yourself. 
Come on, you've got to convince yourself that you don't belong. I want to see a, a different impression over your mind, a different consciousness. He gets out of that place where he's beaten, broken, busted, and disgusted. He's so demoralized, he's scared to think positive. Come on, he doesn't even want to think positive. Have you ever reached to that place before? You don't want to get too optimistic because you know you might have a, a negative answer. I, I'm talking to real people. Come on, understand me. That, that, you know, I just don't want to get my hopes up too high. He's broken. He is busted. He's disgusted. But he has a new vision of himself. Without a vision, my people would perish. Without a prophetic revelation, we settle for mediocrity. Come on, understand me. Let's take that statement to another level. He had a prophetic revelation of himself. You know, his daddy prayed for him every day. You know, I can remember my little daughter once asked me, she says, Dad, does God cry? Does God cry? I says, darling, the Holy Spirit groaneth with a groaning that cannot be uttered by man. So deeply are the pangs of distress that the Spirit of God expresses over you and me that no man could utter it. He's out of that place and he's heading home. Every single day his father prayed for him and would say the chair, you unkind world, please be kind to my son. He left me in that state of immaturity, feeling as though he was mature, to face the ugliness of a horrible world on the streets of our cities. He left this place. I know he was not prepared for what he was expecting, but the father stood. And one day he's sweeping the yard and he looks down the road. Come on, somebody say, man, aren't you blessed that God is looking out for you and me? And he sees something like the image of his son. He looks as though he has lost weight. He looks as though he's walking with a limp. His face has grown a beard. His hair is matted with cow dung and with sheep dung. His father sees his son coming down the street. Understand me, in a place of being cursed and wasted and his father wastes no time. He drops his broom and he takes off towards his son who is making an effort to come home and he runs towards him and he hugs him and he kisses him and he says, you my son was lost but now you are found again. Come on, aren't you blessed that that's the way that God loves you. Nothing could separate you from the lover of your God. Imagine his father hugs him. I'm so happy to see you. He said, son, I don't want to talk about what you did or the mistakes you made. You know, I do a lot of marriage counseling. I'm a, I'm a Christian psychologist, friends. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm Christianized. And sometimes I sit down to counsel couples. And man, it's a war zone. Because she tells me everything he done. And he tells me everything she did and lies a bit. And I'm in the middle. You know what Jesus did when that boy came home? 
He ran towards him and kissed him. Could I tell you something? He said, you know what, man? I don't care what mistakes you made. I don't care about the human frailties or abnormalities or inconsistencies. I don't care about how much wrong you did, how many times you were locked up, or how many prostitutes might have been, or how drunk you were. I'm just happy that you're home, and I want to restore you. I want to rejoice that you have come home to reality and your father's cover. You see, this boy had a filthiness of the flesh, mama. He was filthy in his flesh. But then he has an older brother who never done nothing wrong. But he had a filthy spirit. He would not come out to rejoice with his brother who just came back from a life of rebellion and sin. You know, when you come home, rejoicing in heaven. Let's kill the fatted calf. Let's have a celebration. You know, when you have your victory, there's a lot of people who would not want to celebrate with you. You know, there's a lot of false brethren around you, my dear friends. When you get your victory and your breakthrough, a lot of people would not rejoice with you. Don't expect folks to rejoice when you get your victory and your breakthrough. Could I tell you something? You know, there are two things. There's envy and jealousy. It's so strong in the body of Christ. You see, but you were jealous of man for his gifts or his talents or his abilities. But you envy him, brother, for his possessions. His house, his car, his job. All them nice watch you got, man. You know, man, watch you and you're jealous of you. Be envious of you because of your possessions. Brother, I'm sorry, I can't come in. Take off that clothing. Take off that shoe. Sent my servants to bathe you. And as he entered into that pool where he was taking a bath and a shower, there were years of muck that fell off of him. That pool is a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. When you are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, can I tell you, it becomes your garment of righteousness. Where you put on that garment of righteousness, come on, somebody say amen. No weapon formed against you would prosper. You are covered by the blood. There is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you something? There is no religion. There is no experience. There is no philosophy. There is no dogma. There is no theology except the blood of Jesus Christ that gives you the ability to live right and gives you the ability to conquer sin. Hear what I'm telling you? Nothing but the blood. you no more. I'm going to give you a new walk. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm going to give you a new state. I'm going to give you a new standing. Hear what I'm telling you, church? You ain't going to walk that walk no more and go to the hog pens no more. You're going to walk a walk of righteousness. Daddy takes out a ring and puts it on his finger. It's a ring with eight jewels. And they were the eight jewels of reconciliation. Aren't you blessed that God loves you that kind of way? Come on, aren't you blessed that God loves you that kind of way? Aren't you blessed, aren't you blessed that He loves you that kind of way? you to stand and I want us to make a prophetic declaration. Pastor Paul, nothing happens until a prophetic word is released. Let's put some theology in place. The body of dry dead bones. Nothing happened. Until a prophetic word was released. 
And when a prophetic word comes from the Holy Spirit, when it comes from the Holy Spirit, you could take it to the bank. It would not bounce. Just lift your hands to God, my dear friends. And I'm going to declare a prophetic word over you, over your household, over your homes, over your children, over your spouses, over your neighbors, over this territory. What is it called? Mova Lavantil territory? So now say with me, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare an eviction of every spirit that is contrary to your divine nature. Every demon, every stronghold, every power that has got territorial rights to live in this community is evicted in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. It's no longer demons walking here, but there will be angels of heaven. Come on. They're going to encamp around this area. Hear what I'm telling you, church? They're going to take you to work and bring you back angels of heaven. And Father, say with me, Father, we come against every territorial demon that has got territorial rights to this place. And we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to every spirit, every demon, every stronghold. We evict them, cast them out of this area, out of our marriages, out of our homes, out of our children, out of our workplaces. And we commit everything to your hand. Come on. Say, I declare transformation in the name of Jesus. Our children are coming home. Our spouses are coming home. Our community members are coming home. We have declared a prophetic word. And how many will believe what you just declared? Come on, give the Lord a great big clap offering this morning, friend. Come on, I want you to receive it. Declare. You got to agree. You got to agree. Come on, agree, agree, agree. Any two holding hands and agreeing. Done, it's done, it's done. Well, friends, it was a pleasure ministering to you this morning. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and share this video. If you need prayer or counseling, feel free to call us at 680-7111 or WhatsApp us at 754-4270. Someone is ready and waiting to pray and speak with you. If you desire to make a financial contribution, you can make a direct deposit to our Scotiabank checking account, Bibleway Temple. Account number 1200176, transit number 90035. On behalf of the leadership of this ministry, Apostle Celestin and Mother Europol, we say thank you and we look forward to having you fellowship with us another Sunday.